In this lesson, we'll be looking at some of the software we'll be using to set up our project, and then create a project using Vue CLI. The first thing we'll need is Node. Vue CLI version 3 requires at least version 8, and you can grab it here from nodejs.org. As a side note, if you're on a Mac, you can use something like NVM to install a particular version and switch to it if you need to keep a different version of Node on your machine for work or projects that might depend on it. And we can see here under important notes that there are some alternatives suggested if you're working on a Windows machine. Next up is Vue CLI. We'll be using version 3, which is in beta at the moment. It's safe to use for our purposes, but expect some things to change before the final release. However, the code we write will still remain valid. It's recommended as well that you install Vue DevTools, as it'll make development and debugging a whole lot more visual. It's available for Chrome, Firefox, and there's an Electron app that will work with everything else. For source control and deployment, you'll need an account on GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. I'll be using GitHub, but either of these three will work just fine. You can set up a free account with any of these services. This leads us to Netlify. We'll use this service to host our app, which will automatically deploy when we push our changes to our version control provider. It'll also host AWS Lambda functions for us which we will use to fetch our feeds. For our purposes, the free plan is more than generous. With that, let's scaffold out our app. Looking at the view CLI documentation here, we can see that we need to run npm install global view CLI. Now this might take a little while to finish, so feel free to put the kettle on while you wait. I already have it installed, so I'm going to set up the project with view create feed reader. You'll see here that there's a bunch of different options, especially manually select features. From here you can do things like select a TypeScript configuration or customize the ESLint configuration if you need to. For our purposes though, the default setting will do just fine. Okay, now that that's ready, We'll go into our new project and then we'll take a look at exactly what's been given to us. Since I chose the default configuration, you'll see that it's pretty empty at the moment. But we'll leave this for now and in the next lesson, we'll take a look at a plugin for the Vue CLI that will let us write our function to fetch feeds and also test it locally.